in just a moment. Well, it's a very special treat, uh, Ben, don't you think, having that following the Reds? Absolutely. Of course, they've flown in formation on several previous occasions, and what an incredible sight this aircraft makes. We're all relatively familiar, I think, with the Vulcan now. Uh, uh, from we see something of that, don't we, in the very steep wingovers that the aircraft still to this day performs. That's correct. We could, uh, you know, the aircraft is capable of rolling, but uh, we're not allowed to do that. But uh, we do wingovers, uh, we pitch up and... Uh, use uh, up to 135 degrees of back. Uh, as you see now, the aircraft coming towards us, um, we'll be uh, doing one of those maneuvers right now, crowd centre. And very poignantly, we remember today young Jason Ward and his mother, Beverly Le Penier, who are very much missed by their family and friends. I know great support of the Victory Hotel Gentlemen, the, uh, the start of this display season uh, this year, we've uh, introduced a, a B axis on crowd uh, arrival. Um, the rest of the display is very similar to you may have seen in the past, uh, consisting of wing overs and steep turns. Uh, Bill Ramsey flying the aircraft uh, at the moment. He's bringing the aircraft back in the left-hand turn, um, and uh, will be uh, performing the uh, the Bombay turn. So uh, cameras ready. Um, as the aircraft comes crowd centre, uh, she'll start a right-hand uh, turn and the bomber doors will be opened, uh, showing you uh, the uh, large uh, expanse of the uh, bomb bay itself. And how appropriate, as always, to see XH558 performing here at Waddington. We're in bomber country, of course, here up in Lincolnshire, and for many years Waddington was itself not just the base for Vulcan Squadron, but the base of this aircraft. Jets with 16,400 pounds of power each, and look at that huge width swing span of 111 feet, just a little bit bigger, would you believe, than an Airbus A318. It's perhaps hard to believe from the very advanced look of this aircraft's design that this was a machine that first flew in prototype form then known as the Avro 698 in 1952. 
Yes, from the hands of the remarkable Roy Chadwick, and who would believe that just 11 years earlier, the Lancaster, which he also displayed, uh, took flight as well. I mean, an amazing turnaround in technology in the space of little over 10 years. Quite, quite an achievement, and it all started, I understand, with a scruffy bit of paper and, a, and an odd drawing, wondering whether this could actually fly. success of the uh, Spitfire came to prominence that uh, Roy Chadwick uh, himself died in 1947 and never really saw uh, of course the great success of this uh, aircraft and uh, his work taken on by a band of very very able engineers just as uh, those supporting the aircraft here today. It was really a mark of the success of the V force as part of Britain's nuclear deterrent during the Cold War years that the Vulcan didn't actually have to go to war until the Falklands in 1982. he relishes his weekends whilst flying this aircraft and uh, yes uh, Ben I was referring to that uh, support it is extraordinary how much money well, it's that got. It's a real but, thoroughbred though isn't know, it? Uh, yeah. let's just look at the people out there today supporting it and they're right yeah. across the country and of course a number of corporate sponsors as well who've given generously to the Vulcan to the Sky Trust over the years of course the Civil Aviation Authority has been very supportive in all those endeavors likewise the Aircraft Engineering Authority Marshall Aerospace and other firms giving tremendous support. AD Holdings, BA Systems, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, EADS, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Megit, Messier Doughty, Rolls-Royce and Serco. Just bear in mind that this aircraft takes about £2 million a year to run. No aircraft is cheap to run, an aircraft of this size and complexity especially so. No, that's quite something to have in a private collection, isn't it? So, Kev, you were about to say. Yeah, we, should mention, uh, so we haven't actually mentioned the AOs on board today. We normally fly with two, uh, with one, we've got two. Uh, Phil Davies is the uh, man in seat today, and uh, he works for uh, Cell XCS, who are very uh, good in sponsoring us and also giving him the time to do his work. And also, uh, Jordan Mazzari is, uh, is with us, uh, just joined the team. Uh, he works for Cobham, and they're very, they do a very similar um, deal where they uh, release Jonathan to fly with us, and so in fact are uh, sponsoring us as well. Very appropriately, the aircraft today lives at a former Vulcan base, what used to be RAF Finningley, now Robin Hood Airport, Vulcan to Sheffield. You can go and visit it there. You can go and join the Vulcan to the Sky Club. You can find out more about everything at www.vulcantothesky.com. What a spectacle now for those of you in the right position as XH558 comes in past XM607 to land. Uh, Bill Cook here, so I'll get you on the ground, you'll notice he holds the motor in the air. Uh, we call this aerodynamic braking. The uh, delta wing is a big air uh, wing and it also acts as an air brake in this situation, so he's slowing down purely just using the aerodynamics of the, uh, the wing itself. Yes, thank you very much indeed for that marvellous round of applause.